Now on BBC Two Tonight's Real Movies presentation, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, introduced by Giles Cosgrove and inspired by the Plainfield Ghoul. It depicts a family of cannibalistic serial killers. The film contains scenes of graphic violence and some viewers may find the subject matter disturbing. Camera speed. Now, here is a motion picture film. Good evening, and welcome to Real Movies. Tonight's film is a low-budget shocker that ushered in moral panic against on-screen violence. Its influence is undeniable, and it has had a lasting legacy on the landscape of modern horror cinema. Tonight's film is The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Released in 1974, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the originator of the classic slasher premise. A group of teenagers get stuck in an isolated location, in this instance the fields of Texas, and when looking for help, stumble onto an eerie abandoned house. It could be the start of a Scooby-Doo cartoon, right up until the moment Leatherface appears and starts tearing through the terrified teens with a chainsaw. At that point, horror cinema changed forever. The film was the directorial debut of Toby Hooper, who also wrote and produced the film with Kim Henkel. Whilst working at the University of Texas, Hooper hit upon a concept for a plot involving isolation, the woods, and the dark. By this point, American news coverage was no longer limited to a presenter behind a desk, and broadcasts covering car accidents and other cases of violence and bodily harm were beamed into people's living rooms each evening. With this desensitization to violence as inspiration, Hooper began developing a tale of cannibalistic murderers. Ed Gain, the Plainfield ghoul, has been named as the model for Leatherface. However, the film borrowed very lightly from those real events. That didn't stop the film claiming it was a true story, and the opening narration drives this point home, creating an instant uneasy tension from the outset. Although such misinformation feels pretty standard in the post-truth era, at the time of the Watergate scandal and the end of the Vietnam War, misinformation was a new and altogether uncomfortable concept that Hooper and the film's marketing used to iconic advantage. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre undeniably looks gorgeous, the 16mm film stock bursting off the screen and just goes to show physical format still has its benefits, there's just something about shooting onto actual film. Produced on a tiny budget, the movie was shot over a heady Texan summer that caused no end of discomfort for everyone involved that eventually played into the film's hands, creating a similar atmosphere for the viewer. With startling imagery and set design from Robert A. Burns, the bone room full of chicken feathers is truly foul, and unrelenting violence edited superbly by Sally Richardson and Larry Carroll, no one had ever seen anything like this before. After difficulty securing a distributor, the film was eventually released a year after production wrapped, with significant cuts to get an R rating. The coveted PG-13 was impossible. Some cinemas refused to show it, and audiences in San Francisco walked out, but the film's legendary status would be cemented across the pond, in the United Kingdom. The era of the video nasty, a time of hysterical panic fronted by moral crusaders like the intolerable Mary Whitehouse and that bastion of tabloid journalism, the Daily Mail, occurred thanks to a loophole which meant home videos, which were brand new in the late 70s and early 80s, didn't have to be certified by the BBFC. This meant that films banned in cinemas, which the Texas Chainsaw Massacre eventually was in the UK, could get by on VHS. That was until 1984, when the British government passed the Video Recordings Act. With White House and the Mail, alongside Tory politicians blaming graphic home videos for a rise in youth violence, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was put on a list banning it from sale. So much was the panic of the video nasty, my landlord, who was a video sales rep at the time, was under instruction to report any rental store renting copies of listed films to the police. Not that he ever did. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was one of the most notorious video nasties, and its ban was not lifted until 1999, with much fanfare at its screening on Channel 4 a year later in celebration. The Film Fear Weekend continues now with the network television premiere of Toby Hooper's notorious 1974 gore-fest, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, introduced by the director himself. 
There are scenes of graphic violence some viewers may find disturbing. As such, its reputation has never wavered. However, I was not impressed. By modern standards, it's not actually that gory. The first killing is really blink and you'll miss it, and much of the really awful imagery is left to your imagination, as all good suspense films do. If the narrative worked, then it would be great, but I saw the twists coming a mile off, the dialogue was weak, and chase sequences that start out great descend into obnoxious screaming accented with the wail of a chainsaw. I found most of the characters to be whiny, annoying, and unsympathetic, and the only character I had any sort of connection with was Franklin in the wheelchair, played by Paul A. Partain, who seemed to be the only one in their doomed lunchbox on wheels who had any sense. The rest of the cast just felt like cattle headed for the slaughter, an allegory that the film lays on pretty thick. There was only one jump scare that really got me, and I enjoyed that, but for the most part, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre seems to be trying to be gory for the sake of it. That said, Leatherface is actually pretty frightening, and I'd argue that this is because, unlike subsequent slasher killers like Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers, there is no humour with Leatherface, just relentless brute force armed with a chainsaw. It's a film I have a great amount of respect for, but was not entertained by. In fact, I found myself getting bored at times. It's a film that every horror fan has to see at least once, a post-Woodstock exploration of nihilism, so keep it cult and make sure you've finished your dinner. This is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre.